This is a day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. For God has given us a wonderful promise, a promise that his love is with us and for us. Today is Reformation Sunday, a Sunday where we recognize that our heritage, the church grew out of the faithfulness of Martin Luther as he wanted to reform and allow the church to be more perfect, to be more united to God's mission. And it is this Sunday that we recognize that God is constantly reforming us, his people, and asking us to be loyal to him and loyal to him alone. Today we continue worshiping God and we invite you and we thank you for being a part of our services. Today, we will continue on looking at how Isaiah speaks to and uses God's words to show God's faithfulness to his people. And he invites his people to put their faith in him. And that is what we need to do today. So as we begin worship, let us pray. Father God, we look to you. We look to serve you with all of our heart, mind, and soul. May your grace, may your peace fill us with your mercy. Lord, we seek you. We seek the grace that you have for us. And Lord, may our faith be firmly on you. May our faith firmly be fixed upon who you are. Praise be your name above all names. Use us. Guide us. And may we worship you more abundantly and more fully. We love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. The Lord is known by many names. These are just a few. I've always loved this song. Shows the agelessness of our Lord God.
love for you to join us every Sunday at 11 a.m. Right now, we're just online, and we encourage you and would love for you to join us every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. We go live on YouTube, so just search for Horizon Community Church and on YouTube, and we will pop up there. Secondly, we would love it if you would join us for worship in a different way. Worshiping by studying God's Word. And we have a Bible study that meets at 6 p.m. on Wednesdays, where we are going through the book of James. We're going through a specific study, and we are We've just begun. We've only made it through a few actual verses of James, but we would love it if you would join us. So we invite you to join us as we worship God in that way. And now I would love to invite our worship team up to continue in our time of worship. Thank you. 
God is good. It's such a pleasure and it is such a privilege to raise our voices in praise to him. Amen. So wherever you are, if you're in the kitchen, the bedroom, I don't know where you are, but just raise your voice to him and he will hear you. Hallelujah. I raise a hallelujah provide relief 
in the face of their despair, when we look to the world for help, as Israel looked to their neighbors, looked within themselves and what things they could offer, those things did not offer any help. The only help that they could find was God. The only thing that actually was effective was God's assistance and work in them. And at best, when we try to work it out a solution, we try to work out things on our own, at best, they fall short or are merely temporary solutions. Our politicians, no matter their party, Republican or Democrat, or even the birthday party, are evidence that there are so many empty promises out there, and they do not fulfill their purpose. But when we place our faith in God, our faith solely in God, we are not disappointed, but are rather filled with fulfillment and peace. Because God's grace will prevail over every circumstance, and we are called to embrace it by placing our faith firmly in God. As we turn to this passage in Isaiah 33, we see God warning the nations that even though they think they are in control, even though they think that they are superior, no matter who they have vanquished, God is firmly in control, and God's kingdom will prevail over all. I now invite you to turn with me in your Bibles to Isaiah chapter 33, starting in verse 2. Isaiah 33, verse 2. Lord, be gracious to us. We long for you. Be our strength every morning, our salvation in time of distress. At the uproar of your army, the peoples flee. When you rise up, the nations scatter. Your plunder, O nations, is harvested by young locusts. Like a swarm of locusts, people pounce on it. The Lord is exalted, for he dwells on high. He will fill Zion with his justice and righteousness. He will be the sure foundation for your times, a rich store of salvation and wisdom and knowledge. The fear of the Lord is the key to this treasure. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. When we ask for grace, we must and we are confessing that our human effort is failed. Our effort is futile. Because there's nothing inside of us that can warrant salvation. There's nothing inside of us that can provide such saving grace. And therefore, when we turn to God and ask God to come and enter into our hearts and minds, then and only then are we fleeing from the foolishness that is our own self-justification, our own self-salvation. Israel foolishly put a, their trust in trying to give to Assyria a tribute, a bribe, something that would save them. But Assyria took their tribute and marched on anyway. The king of Judah 
And the people of Judah put their trust in those things, and they were of no use. But when the king and the people of Israel put their trust in the Lord of hosts, when, like a convicted criminal, they threw themselves at the mercy of the Lord, then God acted. And in this confession that they put themselves before God, there is nothing that was equal to God. And there was no alternative for them except total dependence upon God's power. Total dependence on God to save them. They trusted. They turned their trust to God and to God alone. And that trust opened their eyes to watching God. Watching God act as their Savior by saving them from those that would wish to plunder, those that would wish to be victorious over them. Those that were treacherous were tricked into utter confusion and took flight. When they waited upon the Lord with a penitent spirit, with a spirit that said, God, I'm not worthy. I've put my trust in the world. When they took that path, when they took that approach before God, then the king, along with the people, got a glimpse of who God was. And this vision that Isaiah was giving to the people. Because God and God alone is exalted in his majesty, in his justice, and in his righteousness. God's ways and God's knowledge are the only thing that we should be acknowledging as the source of any stability and strength in our lives and in our nation. And when we look to the future and when the people of Judah looked to the future, they saw that the fear of the Lord was their hope and not something to be dreaded. As we turn from what God did for the people of Israel, we look into our own lives. Our sin, our dependence on that which is not of God, leads to judgment, leads to separation, and leads to destruction. Over and over again, Isaiah, and in our lives, we repeat this sequence. We sin, we ask for forgiveness, we sin, we ask for forgiveness, we sin, we ask for forgiveness. This sequence of sin and of repentance, this judgment in the case of Israel, this is a sequence that goes on and on and on into infinity until we fully give of our hearts and minds to God. Our sin leads to sorts of judgment. There are consequences for us sinning. There are consequences for us falling short. Those consequences of us falling short of the glory of God lead to division, lead to hurt, lead to heartache, lead to us falling further and further away. We look at the church in America right now, 
And we are just as divided as a church as the country is. We are fallen human beings and we will argue and we will fight and we will not seek peace with one another. Either over politics or over some interpretation of Scripture. Or over things that do not matter. What matters is that God desires for us to be unified. Our, one of our founders, John Calvin, said that in anything that is non-essential, we must seek unity. As we are celebrating the Reformation, we must understand that the Reformation is also a great division in the church. There are those that would seek to invalidate salvation for some because our doctrine doesn't line up. This is a result of the sin of the church. We cannot allow that sin to divide us any further. Because if we allow that sin to perpetrate in our hearts, to perpetrate in our minds, to perpetrate in our souls, we as the church will be judged. But instead, we need to look deep inside of our hearts and we need to see where we fall short and humble ourselves and fall at the mercy of God, much like Israel did. When they realized they were going astray, they fell at God's feet and they called for God's mercy on their lives. We as the church need to call for God's mercy in our church, in our nation. We need to look deep. And if we see ourselves separating from one another, rather than embracing one another, if we see ourselves sowing division instead of unity, We need to repent. We need to turn around. Because God is calling us to come close to Him. And the closer we are to Him, the closer we are to building His kingdom here on this place, here in this city, in this nation, in this world. When we're ready to let go, that sin, then we are allowing our faith to come and take hold. Our faith in God and God alone. When we let go of all of those things that we want to grasp hold of, then we are allowing God to use us and use our faith. However, it is important that we understand that we cannot allow our faith to change based on our circumstance. We cannot allow our faith in the things that God has promised us be shaken because of where we find ourselves. In our country, even in the midst of the most contentious times, it is important for us to maintain our faith that God is in control, that God is going to overcome anything that we may encounter. God is going to overcome 
We know this because as Judah, they sought peace with their invaders. And in the midst of seeking peace, they didn't find it until they turned to God. Oftentimes, the first thing that we turn to isn't God. It's something, whether it be financial, political, we seek peace through other means, through other channels, through other people. But God, God reminded Israel that they needed to put their trust and their faith completely in him. No matter what. No matter what invaders are at the door. No matter what your circumstance is, God is reminding us and telling us and instructing us that the God that overcomes everything wants us to put our faith fully in him, not in anything else. We, as we look at a, an election coming up, it is important for us to remember that our faith must firmly and completely and only be in God, not in any human, not in any politics, not in, even in our bank accounts, our jobs, or our families. Our faith must be only firmly in God. Because God's peace is a peace that overwhelms the world. God's peace and God's justice will win this day no matter what. No matter if Donald Trump or Joe Biden or even Kanye West win this election. God's peace is still going to overcome. God's peace is still going to win. God's justice is still going to win. God's righteousness is still going to move throughout this world. And God wants us to put our faith in Him. God wants us to understand that there is nothing that this world has that God can't overcome. There is no chaos, no injustice, no hatred, no invader that God can't overcome. So let us put our faith firmly and completely and totally within God. And when we put our faith firmly in God, then God is ready to use us. God is ready to use us to bring forth his kingdom. God is ready to use us. Us. Those that were sinful. He wants to use us. He wants to call us out of our sin and into faith to build his kingdom. Once we recognize our sin, once we recognize that we have put our trust in things that aren't of God, and when we push those things aside and we fully put on God, Fully put on and allow our faith to guide us, to lead us, to show us what we need to do. Then we are being used by God to bring forth his kingdom. Worship in Judah provided them stability in the midst of trouble. God used the chaotic events of invaders at their gates and used them for his purposes. Used them to bring 
his people closer to him. He used those events to allow the people of Israel, to allow the people of Judah to promote justice and righteousness and to serve our world with those. And we, we need to step out of the chaos and trust that God is going to use us Sometimes we don't know where we're going to go. Oftentimes we don't know where we're going to go. But God is going to use us. And he wants us to advance his kingdom. When we lay aside all of our allegiances except for those to God, then, and only then, will we rise up. We will rise above our conquerors. And we will bring forth by the grace of God, his kingdom into the world. Because we are God's treasure. We are so loved by God that he sent his son to come and die for us. To die for our sins. Not because we were worthy, but because we were treasured by God. Therefore, there is no election result, no circumstance in life. Nothing that separates us from his love. And it is his love that we bring out. Even when people want to fight, we bring God's love to this world. God is calling each and every one of us to be his servants in this place at this time. God's fulfilling mission is never a random act. Rather, it is God bringing his justice, God bringing his grace into the world. God is executing and enacting his purpose into a world that is gradually moving counter to his mission in this world. A world that is moving further and further away from what God desires. A world that looks at righteousness. A, a world that looks at justice. Not as goals. But as things to overcome. This is counter to what God wants. And instead... God wants us to understand that he is going to overcome this world. He is going to overcome chaotic defeat. God is going to overcome plunder. As he did with Judah, he overcame. Assyria was at their door, ready to lay siege. And then God asked. And they took flight. God overcomes those that want to take over. Because God's justice, God's peace, God's righteousness must endure. And God desires to use us to bring forth his purpose. Because his purpose brings peace into the chaos. Brings justice where there is injustice. And when the world is running amok, God brings his righteousness and grace. God provides us his most precious treasures salvation that wins over and leads us into a place where we get to be active participants in God's kingdom in this world. And the fact when we encounter God, 
We must shed our sin because our sin is a product of this world. And this Sunday, Reformation Sunday, points us and shows us our division. But our lives must work to bring unity to a world that is broken. And we must remember that our faith is our guide at all times, guiding us away from the powers of the world and toward the power of the Holy Spirit. For if we focused upon the power of the Holy Spirit, God uses us to bring peace, righteousness, wholeness, and grace to the world. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we ask that you come in and you guide us as your servants. May your peace move through us. May your righteousness be within us. May you help us allow our faith to be our guide. For we pray all of this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm.
An important part of what we do here at this church is we, we pray to God. We give God all of our worries, all of our concerns, because we're not in this alone, but rather God invites us to ask him in. So it is our hearts and our minds that we seek to give to God, that we seek to worship him fully. So let us pray. Father God, we ask that your grace and your mercy be upon this church. Lord, we pray for what you have in store for us in the future. Lord, we ask that may your grace and mercy move through each and every one of the members of this church, that we may grow, not merely in numbers, but we may we grow in faith. May we put more of our trust in you. Lord, we pray for our nation as we have an election coming up. We pray that, Lord, you bring your peace, that you bring your justice, that you bring your mercy. And Lord, that your wisdom be upon all those that are voting, and may your wisdom be upon those who are elected. And Lord, we pray for those that are suffering and hurting as we have increasing COVID-19 numbers in our nation, Lord, we pray that your hand be upon them. And we pray that if it is your will, that you work a miracle and that you make this go away. Lord, we pray that your hand may it be upon every single one of those that are suffering. And Lord, we pray a prayer of thanks we thank you for the news that we got about Brianna. And Lord, we pray that your hand continually be upon her and her family. May your justice and your peace and your love and your mercy be upon them. And Lord, we turn and we pray the prayer that you taught your disciples by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Sometimes we're walking down the road of life and we don't see how it's ever going to work out. But God will make a way as long as we follow Him. We're on His path. That's where we're supposed to be.
to use you. God wants you to put your faith in him. He wants to use you to bring his kingdom to a world. A world that is so prone to chaos. A world that is so prone to falling astray. And he wants to use you to bring his kingdom. All you have to do is put your faith in him and in him alone. And he will use you his treasured human, his treasured child. He will use you to bring the peace that we need. So whenever we go, may we go in peace. Amen.